Okay, so what I'm going to be talking about today is hip and leg design uh, and why it's hard uh, for large-ish mechs. Uh, I say large-ish because obviously um, these are fairly big compared to uh, a mini, but they're certainly not the scale of uh, something like the Cat Pipe or the Lego Dark Knight are doing with their giant uh, and awesome Technic creations. So um, when you get super big, you have a bit more options in terms of using Technic turntables and worm gears and things like that. Uh, when you're working small, like with um, this little guy here that I made recently, the, the Scabret uh, Beta, it's easy because really uh, you don't have much weight bearing and you use very standard uh, ball joints and cups or mixel joints or whatever. But at this size, which I really feel is, is the most kind of minifig scale, you encounter some, some difficulties. So all of my sisterhood mechs use the same design, uh, which is strong, uh, basic, um, but not perfect. So uh, what they all use is uh, these Technic uh, technique rotation discs. These are an amazing part. I've used a hundred of them. Uh, they're great. So they're used up here. Um, I guess speaking about the anatomy of the leg first, I go with um, kind of a biomechanically correct uh, digitigrade, or how we pronounce it, leg, which is what something like an ostrich or an emu would have. So there's no such thing as backwards knees. This is the ankle. Um, what they have is a small or a short rather shin, and then, um, oh, sorry, thigh, and then shin. And then this piece here is the tarso metatarsus, which is basically the long extended toe. So uh, likewise on mine, uh, I have uh, double technic rotation joints uh, up here at the hip, going down the thigh, uh, shin, tarso metatarsus, and then at the bottom, as you've seen from my posts, I use uh, double uh, receptacles there with the various kinds of uh, friction tubes on the back to keep it steady. So. Um, with the Revenant Sisterhood, I'm just using very simple uh, three in a row Technic bricks with uh, rotation joints, and those are plugged right into uh, right into the disc joints, so right into uh, the holes here. And I double that up for strength. Uh, it gets a little bit wobbly if you only use a single, and this works pretty great. Um, it's certainly not perfect. Uh, one reason it's not perfect is because you don't get all of the uh, movement you would get from a real hip. So uh, it can obviously move uh, forward and back because it's on you know these rotation joints for stepping. Uh, it can have the uh, the abduction that uh, you always see uh, for nice kind of wider uh, stances. Uh, those aren't a problem. But what it doesn't have is lateral rotation. So uh, when we move in real life, it's important to be able to turn out or turn in the leg so you can actually turn. Um, so these don't have that. And it kind of drives me crazy because I like to go for uh, realism when I'm building unrealistic giant robots. Um, and that's kind of what I've been working on uh, on and off for the last couple of years. And I still haven't perfected it. Um, if you have any thoughts on it after this video, please drop me a line. I'm sure there's more options um, with Hero Factory, and I see a lot of the Bionicle guys doing interesting stuff, but I don't really have experience with that. So, so this is the kind of the my standard, uh, and I'm probably going to keep using it for the Revenant Sisterhood. Um, the other con I forgot to mention was it's long, right? So the hip attaches here, but Again, looking at the part, it comes all the way back here. So it does necessitate a fairly long lower torso. Uh, it's not a huge deal, again, in the case of the sisterhood because uh, the symbiotes go in the back and you know even the smaller ones uh, tend to have a longer uh, canister there. So it suits the design, but even still, uh, I would much rather if I could uh, not have to deal with this from an aesthetic perspective. And it does kind of offset uh, the hip a bit farther forward than I would like. So that was my first kind of style there. And then the biggest iteration after that, uh, the only one I have remaining still, 
uh, you'll see on the Scavrat uh, destroyer. So same kind of idea, uh, same proportions of the leg, same rotation discs up here. But instead of using the Technic bricks, what I did is uh, I'll actually show you on this piece here. This is this is the old torso on the Canadian Armed Forces uh, arrow that I just redesigned. So uh, instead of those three Technic bricks, what I do is I have this one uh, Technic ball joint and this friction tube here that rotates freely, and that will have a um, axle with a stop on it uh, like this with a ball, and then. That's basically uh, how it attaches to that uh, rotation disc. Obviously, you'd have a, a, a ball on the end of that. So the good thing about this design is you get everything. You get um, you get your uh, abduction like that. You get your uh, forward and back because it's on a it's on a rotation disc, and uh, you actually get your lateral rotation, so it can turn in. That's a little stuck right now because I haven't used this in a while, or turn out. So um, again, you can do a frog pose, which I don't know why you would, but uh, the idea here is it has more realistic uh, range of movement, and you can imagine this thing actually turning by being able to turn its leg out, again, lateral rotation, um, rather than just abduction and forward and back. So this is a, a decent design, um, but again, you have the long um, joint to deal with, and it just tends to be a little bit bigger than I would like. Um, it adds a lot of bulk up here. Uh, the way I've attached it with these Technic uh, uh, axle joints with a receptacle on the top, and there's, there may be a better way to do this, but um, it's... It's pretty workable, but again, results in, in a fairly large uh, lower torso. Um, so maybe if I was to create something more uh, upright and humanoid, as a lot of people have asked, or something more like an atlas than a, than a locust, it might make sense. But I've been moving away from this design. Uh, and then I'll show you where I've landed with that. So uh, kind of going back to the absolute basics. So here is the redesigned uh, legs of the arrow and as you can see it's really as basic as it comes it's uh, bricks with receptacles friction extenders and then ball joints in the legs now there's nothing smart about this or fancy um, but it mostly works so um, the nice thing about this is as you can see, I've been able to make the lower torso much smaller. Maybe you can see, maybe you can't, um, compared to uh, this here. It's obviously much smaller um, and much more proportionate to the actual uh, upper torso, which is somewhere here. And it just looks better and you get everything. So you can obviously, you know, it's a single joint, it's as, it's as simple as it gets. You have all of your ranges of movement, up, down, abduction, lateral, etc., etc. But in terms of weight bearing, it can get a bit dicey, uh, particularly with uh, things like this, like the, my style, which is a very uh, walker style mech, um, rather than upright. So assuming I can get this on here. Um, I need a wider angle lens here. Um, so it fits right on there, and you can't see the whole thing, but that's as good as I can do. And it's pretty strong, it's, it's decent. I mean, you can, you can manhandle it a little bit. If I was to start tipping this forward, actually that's, that's okay. It's still holding, still holding, and then it starts to tip, right? Now, I don't know if a creation like this could be dipping that far forward in real life, but regardless, it's kind of crummy that it's so uh, tippy. Uh, not so tippy, but a little bit tippy. I mean, I can, I can pick this up, I can put it down, um, I can adjust the legs and knock off armor plating and do a decent amount of things before it starts to get dicey. Um, 
but something of this weight is, is borderline. And this arrow design and the destroyer design are actually um, some of the lighter of my, of my upper torsos, um, even though it looks kind of big. I could probably do more lightning uh, by using maybe a bit more of a Technic frame rather than a brick built frame. But uh, anyway, that's a problem. So what I started doing, and I haven't done it for this yet, and I may not do it because again, I, it's hard to decide how much, how much work do you put in for um, realism versus you know, pastel. Uh, so here is, let's see, these are the legs for the Archon. Um, and you can see these friction tubes here. These aren't for aesthetics, these are actually functional. So um, I have the, the top of this uh, off right now, but again, you can basically see it's, uh, it's just uh, bricks, receptacles, friction extenders. But in this case, I have these guys here. So um, again, I full range of movement, forward, back, left, right, etc., etc., and these tubes move in and out, and they had just enough extra resistance um, in order to prevent it from tipping. Like if I even just now try to tip this forward, it's much harder compared to something like this that's unsupported, which I can just tip all day long. Uh, just that little bit of extra resistance. So that was done, um, they kind of angle all the way back here. Um, it's hard to show on camera, but uh, effectively you can see them here and they're positioned a little bit uh, to the rear of the, um, the main joints there. So that was one approach that worked pretty well. And the, um, the Archon upper body is probably the largest, heaviest that I've built and it holds it fine. Uh, another approach I used was on the ogre, on the back here, you can see I've got this kind of contraption. So this is actually using tiny little mixel joints, but it's using them on these Technic connectors with an axle with a stop, these two half plates, and another mixel joint back here. And basically what that does is the exact same thing as the Archon, just a different style. So you can go out and all over the place and so on and so on. And you can see that this part moves as the main joint moves. And again, it's got pretty good resistance to just being tipped forward. I can't very easily do that without gripping the leg and tipping it forward. So, so that gives it the stability it needs for a large upper body. So that's really what it comes down to is a balance of how much are you gonna be playing with it? How much are you gonna be posing it? How much work do you wanna do? And again, if anybody has suggestions for me, I'm very happy to take them. This is effectively what you saw here on the um, Ogre, uh, where it's basically the main joints and the uh, extra tension joints that allow all the different ranges of movement. Um, a bit stiff, but that's kind of the point. Um, but then you can end up with the same problem as you did with the rotation discs where, you know, you're getting into something along. So that is the joys of hip design in a nutshell. Thanks for listening.